I just wanted to give a quick update on what's happening in the LHON community. Uh, since we met last year, it's growing. Uh, our main Facebook group last year at this time, we had about 1,600 people. We now have over 2,200 people participating very actively. Yeah. I've been trying to send out more emails this year than I did in the past, and we've got over 800 people receiving uh, emails and conference attendance. The first year we had about 50 people, last year we had about 80, and this year we had over 100. So good growth, good activity. One of the cool things that happened at last year's conference was um, some of the folks who attended said, this was so much fun networking and communicating that we can't wait a whole nother year. So three of the folks who were involved uh, last year came to me with an idea. And Cindy, if you would come forward and bring the mic to Andy. Andy's gonna talk a little bit about the LHON Live monthly calls. Hi, everyone. As Lissa mentioned, uh, last year I met Maria and Jessica, who I think, at least Maria you heard from earlier. Many of you already know Jessica as well. Any of you who were here last year heard from all three of us and heard our stories. But we all benefited, as I'm sure everyone here today benefited a lot from all of the stories, all of the journeys that we heard last year. Several people shared great stories. Today we heard eight more wonderful stories from guys and girls many of whom we have things in common with or just think are really awesome people. And so we thought it'd be a great idea, although we can't always get doctors involved throughout the year or always have everyone here involved, we started a once a month conference call on the first Wednesday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we get together and talk about various topics, share stories, and more than anything, it's just a chance for those of us who Maybe you're not involved in Facebook. Maybe you can only dedicate one night a month to kind of staying in touch with these people. It's a chance to remember this community, be a part of this community, kind of gut check yourself and make sure there's nothing happening out there that you're way behind on. So we do host these calls. We encourage people to email the three of us at lhonlive at gmail.com. Get a chance to share your own story. I'm sure there are many wonderful stories in the room today that we either haven't heard in the conference calls or in a conference, so we encourage you to email us, share topics that you want to hear more about. We'll make sure we have those topics in the future. As a reminder, our next call will be July 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. So if you get a chance to be a part of one of those calls, we'd love to have you involved. Myself, I've enjoyed the calls a lot. I know a number of other people here have called and hopefully gotten at least something from them. So thanks to everyone who calls every month. And we certainly look forward to the next one. Thanks, Thank Lisa. You, Andy. And I think a, a, a networking event like the one we're having here is great because it draws from around the country and around the world. But there's also something really important about networking with people who live close by you. Um, you have sort of shared situations with doctors, maybe you use the same rehab counselors, you just have experiences um, that, that are helpful to share. Um, and it's just nice when somebody's newly affected to have some folks nearby to talk to. And um, in some different um, cities, there have been some local events that have taken place. Uh, Cindy, could you tell us your experience? daughter, um, she's been affected for six years, so last year it was five years, and she really wanted to come to the conference because she had never met anyone else with Elham before. So timing-wise, it just didn't work out. So I had a cookout at my house, and I'm in central Massachusetts, which is pretty accessible to several states. Um, most people came from Massachusetts, but we did have someone come all the way from Albany, New York. So it was a nice way to get together, discuss different things. The, the um, affected, Elhan affected um, people, they learned about different technology each people, everyone was using. And I know for my daughter, it, I think it made her feel better to realize, you know, there are other people like me out there. So, so it, was, it was a nice thing to do. 
And if you could give the microphone over to Allison. That's okay, you didn't know. Hi there, I'm Allison Patelis, and we live in Atlanta. And really the reason I did it was Jeremy was coming, Lissa's son, uh, Jeremy was coming to Atlanta. I thought, oh my gosh, we've got to get you know, as many people as I know together. And really, it's not that many that I know. And so got me to thinking, um, Lissa passed a name along to me. And I think that's how it happens. But I think it's so important. Um, one of the gentlemen that came to my home that night, he had never met anyone before. And so I think this grassroots angle is really incredible. Um, and I even said to Alyssa, uh, I would like to start an additional Facebook group, and these aren't for you know major discussions, but maybe geographically, where it's just people reaching out. Um, we've had a couple newly affected in the Georgia area, and I think it's just saying, "Hey, we're here. We're close." Like Lissa said, "Who's your doctor? What do you do? You know, who do you know?" That kind of thing I think is super important, and um, so I am going to jump on that. And, and maybe geographically, we, we start four to five little just sub pages. Again, just it's a place to go. Um, just to help each other. And Lissa, you're awesome. None of this would happen without you. Thank you. And Hi, and I'm Lori. Uh, I live in the DC area, and we had a get together too when Lissa was here a couple of years ago. And I have three brothers that are affected, and ha again, none of them have ever met anybody with the disease. So we decided when Lissa was here, I have a brother that's local to have a get together and it was really good because he got to share his experience which is everyone's experience here and he thought he was alone and was the only one going through this and I think that you know the more we do get together and the more we do know people that are in our local area and can talk about things you know he's in the technology field and he wants to talk to someone else in the technology field and how you get around and you know, some of the services that you do get that are an advantage to the disabled that nobody knows about, right? Because you're acting like a, a, a sighted person when you're not because you look like everybody else, right? So it is nice to get together just so that everybody can share that. And it was really easy and really fun. And I would recommend it if, if uh, you get a group together or you know people in your area, start working on that. And I'm going to try to do that as well. And then if you could take the mic to Jessica in the front row here, Phoenix. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica. Um, I'm from Phoenix, and I want to do the same thing as the other ladies. So actually, at the end of June, I'm hosting the first Phoenix dinner. It's going to be on a Sunday night. So I actually learned that there's 12 families in Phoenix that are affected with LHON. So we're going to just get together for a quick dinner, and it, it's really kind of cool to see how close the LH1 family is and how we, you never know. So Candace's sister, Kim, actually lives in Phoenix. So I actually met her through Lissa, and so we were emailing back and forth. And in October, I am hosting the second Dinner in the Dark, which is a fundraiser I put on for LH1. And... So I started reaching out to all the Phoenix people. And so Kim's going to help me put on the second year Dinner in the Dark. So it's just really cool to kind of see how the connection totally spreads all over the country. And so we are having dinner in Phoenix. Thank you. So again, I think that, you know, there's, um, there's opportunity, there's data, there's people. Um, so if anyone is so inspired, if anyone's interested, if they'd like to help develop the local community, please let me know. I, I, I know lots of people individually, but I need you to help me pull them together. So contact me if that, if that interests you. Raising awareness, it's been a good year for awareness raising. Chaz Davis, um, who spoke last year, he was covered, featured in, in Runner's World. There was a video done about him. Jared Hara was on BBC.com. Uh, Brett Devlo, um, some people know him as the blind kid, uh, and he's a skateboarder. He was on the ABC 2020 episode my son was on a couple years ago. He was on with him, and his friend did a, a video, um, and it went viral with over 17,000 um, views. Um, actually, Zanetta Kimplin was just on her local TV uh, showing a, a woman with LHON um, that just happened. Um, so all kinds of good awareness raising going on. 
Uh, last year at the end of the conference, um, I asked for uh, comments and, and one of the comments was we need to do more education. And uh, been working on that a little bit this year. Um, there's an organization called the North American Neuro-Ophthalmology Society, NANOS, and um, it's, uh, neuro-ophthalmologists are who we can see who understand our disease, and yet many of them don't know much about LH1, they don't see enough of us, and most of them do not know that there's any sort of a patient organization um, out there. And they happen to be having their annual conference in San Diego this year. So I worked with the organization and just threw a little piece together telling the world about um, that we do have an organization and that we do have a conference. Um, we have the monthly calls, we have a, a Facebook site, and I talked to a lot of neuro-ophthalmologists and just said, hey, do you have LHON patients? And then told them about the community. Um, so raising awareness uh, within the neuro-ophthalmology group. Um, attended the American Foundation of the Blind um, uh, meeting, annual meeting in Phoenix, which was actually, um, how I ended up getting to know Andrea and Blind Square. Um, World Orphan uh, Drug Con Congress attended there and met with folks um, from uh, companies that are working on treatment possibilities. Um, hope to go to the American Academy of Ophthalmology and do as I did at, at Nanos. Um, perhaps go to Envision where folks work on uh, research for low, uh, low vision rehabilitation. Fundraising, always uh, important because for things to happen, uh, money needs to be raised. Uh, Keith um, was inspired by the Ice Bucket Challenge and started the In Your Face Challenge. Some of you created some cool videos and did some fundraising for that. Um, Jessica was just talking about her first dinner in the dark and, and second one coming up. Um, we've seen Maria's focus bracelets and uh, you know, part of that is, is beauty and a message, and part of it is, is funding a portion goes to research. Some folks do golf tournaments. Um, Fred Deal was here, but I think he had to leave for a meeting. Um, but his organization has been doing um, golf tournaments for 20 years now, uh, and the funds go to LHON Research. Um, there's um, a family in Massachusetts that does birdies for the blind, uh, and um, I think this is their third year, um, and raising significant thousands of dollars towards LHON research. Um, the, the last one is actually just a family friend of ours, but they, um, they're a French family that we know, and they were gonna, as a family, run the New York City Marathon, and they just wanted to help us, and so they dedicated their run to LHON and um, pitched it to their friends and raised six, seven thousand dollars for LHON research. And it was as simple as they sent me a few photos, I uploaded it to a software page, and it did the fundraising. And um, so it doesn't have to be hard. So if anyone uh, wants to get involved in fundraising, there are ways, there are a variety of ways to do it. Um, feel free to reach out, uh, glad to help on that. Um, the community has been supporting research. Uh, some of the things that have happened, um, we funded um, an LHON mood study, um, and many of you participated in that. So I think when it comes to research, there's really two parts to it, and uh, the panel talked about that earlier. Of course, uh, research needs funding, so we provided a grant for the mood study, and it also needs participants. And so recruiting, having uh, email information, having the Facebook, having the community provides the forum for gathering um, patients to participate, participate. And as more trials come to the fore, having this communicate, uh, community, that will help. Uh, we also uh, did a grant to the Doheny Institute to, to work on mouse models of mitochondrial disease, um, which um, is, is uh, clinical level work that ultimately can lead to solutions, treatments, therapies. Uh, we didn't have much talk earlier about um, the three-person IVF procedure that Dr. Yuan Man talked about at length at last year's conference, but NAMDAC has been um, working towards that this year, and they wanted uh, people in the mitochondrial community to participate, so we were able to outreach and got good uh, participation in the um, uh, LHON community. 
and uh, there was an organization that was doing a, a study on attitudes about LHON and uh, in terms of recruitment both in the U.S. and internationally, we were able to participate uh, by helping uh, recruit uh, patients. And, and again, this was mentioned earlier, being able to get people to participate is important if we want to get um, uh, trials to happen. So again, the more we mobilize, the better off we all are. Um, as was discussed, there are clinical trials on the horizon, which is kind of new for our community. There really hasn't been a whole lot of research. There are other diseases out there where there's been a history of clinical trials. It's new for us, and we're going to have more and more opportunities, which is a great thing, um, which my, the way I look at it is that, you know, in a lot of cases, there's a belief that um, the the belief is that the treatment window is often in that beginning stage, which means um, carriers, unfortunately, may become affected. We've heard diagnostic odysseys, which can take a long time, but if you're informed, you, you can get to a diagnosis so much more quickly. So there are ways to inform family members. We talked about that with genetic counselors. If you're comfortable sharing information about LHON with maternal relatives so that everybody's informed, uh, then when there's um, clinical trial opportunity, it's, it's good for, for them and good for the community. Um, and personally, I think that uh, talking about LHON with relatives is a lot easier now than maybe it was 5, 10, 15 years ago, because look at all the positive stories we now have out there. Um, it's, it's, I think those, all of these stories help, help, tell, help tell the tale. We've been collaborating with UMDF. We're part of UMDF. We're a mitochondrial disease. And so UMDF is a relatively large organization in the world of, um, uh, of patient advocacy. And so we're not just isolated as LHON. We're part of the broader UMDF community, as you heard um, Chuck and Patrick say at the, at the beginning of the day. And it's good for us to be part of something larger, and it's good for them to have us. Um, this Day on the Hill, which is taking place tomorrow, is the third time that the UMDF has organized this process of taking uh, mitochondrial patients to the Hill to talk about mitochondrial disease and to lobby Congress to increase funding. And in this situation, there's strength in numbers, and we're bringing 43 people from this conference are part of tomorrow's initiative. That's 17% of the people who are doing this for UMDF. That matters. So um, I think it's great uh, that we're, we're working with them, and it's good for them that, them that we're all working together. Um, they're also, uh, they do grants um, on a variety of mitochondrial diseases, and one of the grants that they're working on this year is specifically um, LHON related, and we're working to uh, find a way to co-fund that. Um, real important issue is, are we gonna do this again next year? And yes, we are. Um, and actually in 2016, the LHON conference, it's gonna be really easy to remember. Uh, it's also June 17th, and it's also in Washington, just the other one. So <laughs> we'll be in Seattle, Washington, the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel, Seattle Airport. Uh, and we're going to be aligning with the UMDF family meeting. Um, you may or may not know that the UMDF has a four day scientific conference every year. And um, this is day one of their four, the four day scientific conference. And then they have a two day patient meeting. So, the, um, so um, usually, UMDF has their patient meeting on Friday, Saturday. So the first year we did an LHON meeting, we did a half day on Thursday while the scientists were here, but not all the mitochondrial patients. Um, and then uh, the second year we did the same thing, but for a, a full day. And then um, this year we backed it up a day to Wednesday so that we could do day on the hill tomorrow. Well, what we're gonna do ne next year is we're gonna align with the patient conference um, uh, for, for UMDF. So in other words, it'll be on a Friday, Friday, June 17th. Um, so the pre-conference gathering like we had last night will be on Thursday, late afternoon, evening, conference all day Friday, June 17th. Uh, UMDF traditionally has a banquet Friday evening, so it'll be an option for this group to attend if desired. Um, and it, by doing the alignment, it really allows um, 
people who are attending this meeting to attend um, UMDF uh, activities and then back over here. And as there are um, treatment options that perhaps cross communities, um, for instance, um, Stealth um, has uh, started a, a clinical trial, um, Stealth Biotherapeutics is doing a clinical trial for a mitochondrial myopathy, and then they've announced that they're going to do something with LHON. So the more we, we cross over, it's more better that we can attend each other's sessions if we want. So we'll be working through that for next year. Hope you're all there. Um, so really my, my closing comment is, you know, Glad you're here, and please, if you want to get even more involved, um, if you can help develop a local group, I'm here to help. Um, if you want to create a fundraising activity, again, we can help there, uh, and really, you can make a difference. Um, so feel free to, to reach out. Um, that's the end of that update. Uh, to close out the day, what I just want to do is, again, say thank you to all the speakers, amazing group of people. And Maria, you're amazing uh, to assemble that group and coordinate all the presentations. Thank you so much. Really fun working with you, Maria. <laughs> Appreciate the sponsors. Uh, we had our volunteers, um, Cindy and... And Patty, thank you so much for doing the mic, ro mic roving. It makes a difference. Um, uh, thanks to the UMDF for having us be here. Thanks to all of you for attending. Um, in terms of evaluations, um, you should have received a paper-based evaluation form on your way in. Would appreciate it if, if you'd like to take a moment and fill it out before you leave. And you can either hand it to me or leave it at the table. Um, at the registration table on your way out. Um, it's also available in an online format if you'd prefer to do it online. Um, it really impacts the agenda. I don't know what to do next year. <laughs> we'll come up with something. But I would, I would love to have your input and um, you know, be honest about what was done, what you liked about what we did. Be honest about what you'd like done um, next year, because really this is intended to meet the needs of who comes. So if, if you articulate what you want more of, what you want less of, what we did well, what we could um, do better and differently, you know, please be honest. If you don't want to put your name, you do not have to. If you choose to put your name, you get to go in a drawing, uh, and the, the drawing uh, prize is that you get a future year's registration fee waived. And um, I did that drawing actually before I came here. And is Mike Vizicek, are you, is Mike here? There you are. Uh, I drew you randomly before today, and the check, is, the check writer is not here, but he's going to mail it to you. So the check's going to be in the mail. Congratulations, and thank you for filling it out. <laughs> for those of you who are doing a Day on the Hill tomorrow, the training starts at 6 p.m., and I think it's just in that room next door over there. can confirm it, but that's, I think, where we'll be. Um, in terms of tonight, I know some folks um, might want to microphone. Patty, can you give Susie the microphone for me? And I know you've been talking to folks about... Yeah. yeah. Um, we tried to talk to a lot of people and we tried to get a lot of consensus about where we might want to gather for dinner. We put it out on Facebook and nobody really cared. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, whatever you want, whatever you want. So we just decided to keep it really simple. And if you want to gather um, down in the lobby or in the restaurant tonight, that's where we'll be sort of like we did because everybody had a good time last night. So it was just nice, you know, chatting and, um, Happy hour ends at 6, but, you know, I'm just letting you know. But they do have, like, you know, better prices on wings and stuff like that. For uh, so, But we're just going to gather downstairs, and if you want to join us, we'll be there. Okay? That's it. Thank you all.